and welcome to another Lizzie Watches Yaoi. And today I am talking about Fujimi Orchestra, an OVA feature length episode that came out in 1997. That is about a very handsome conductor and his concert master and their misunderstandings in relationship and trying to get the Fujimi Orchestra to be one of the best orchestras around. This anime is, it's got its problematic scenes in it, but I really enjoy it. I remember enjoying it back when it came out, but at the time it was one of the first ones that had a bit more of the sexy, sexy scenes in it. And I was a bit like, oh, I like this. The animation is nice. It's definitely still looking good, still holding up pretty well. The character designs are the kind I like, that very much like shoujo bishonen style with the like tall stern semis that kind of half the time look like they're evil the rest of the time look like they're flawed and full of angst and like to sweep their hair out of their face yuki himself is not really as cute and attractive as i like i think the big giant glasses spoil it for him but you know what toin loves him the way he is so that's what's important the anime starts off with our introduction to a handsome Bishonen walking down by a canal with the sakura blossoms and it's all very beautiful and then he hears a violin music and you get a sweeping shot of him going oh and looking like oh my goodness that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen which then it cuts forward a bit and he is now introduced as the new conductor of the Fujima Orchestra. Now this anime does love its flashbacks, its flash forwards, its flashbacks within flashbacks and its flashbacks within flash forwards and flash forwards and flashbacks. It just, uh, so sometimes it was a little bit hard to kind of go, well wait, wait, are we in the past? Are we in the future? Are we in now? Like, by the end of it, it's kind of like, okay, it's all rounded up and it makes perfect sense now and I've got my time scale down. But, you know, while watching it, it's a little bit like, ah, wait, okay, very many flashbacks and flash forwards is going on in this series. So we're introduced to our conductor, which is Toin, and he tells off his violinist, Yuki, for like not concentrating and looking in the mirror rather than him. And the violinist is all like pissed off of him and angry going well whose fault do you think it is that like I can't concentrate and I'm like oh I wonder what the story is there and then we get one of our first flashbacks I think and it's Yuki when our toe in this first come in and everyone's like oh look he's so handsome oh he's very very tall and Yuki's just like oh my god he just reminds me of like a telephone pole he's so tall and lanky and giant and all the girls are like hoo, 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 hoo. meanwhile Yuki is dating the flutist of the orchestra and that's Karashima and Karashima seems to have a little bit of a thing for the new conductor and they they're seen walking together once and therefore Yuki's like right no I hate him now I hate Toin I'm just not going to listen to him and I'm going to be stressy all around him all the time and is basically jealous and then he's hanging out with his mate and I can't tell if this is the past or the future or the present but at first I thought it was part of the flashback but actually under the context of what happens it's probably now set somewhere but he's hanging out with his mate and his mate's trying to comfort him going oh why don't you like Toin he's great for the orchestra and he's just like oh no he's arrogant I'm not really into him and a friend tries to comfort him by putting his hand on him and Yuki's just like oh I've been touched and throws himself on the floor and I was a bit like what is your problem dude and I was like oh no wait a minute this has already happened after the sexy times that we haven't found out about. So we've gone from the flashback, we're back in the present, and he's all like, oh, I'm going to throw myself on the floor. I don't like it. And you're like, oh, dear. Oh, dear. You're a little bit traumatised by something, aren't you? So in practice, Yuki is now answering back to Toen, going, oh, is it me that can't concentrate? Fine. And Toen's like, oh, goodness, OK, let's take 10 minutes and walks off. And Yuki's a bit like, oh, I'm concert master. I better go see if he's okay. And finds him in, I don't know, down in some basement in some weird little room filled with old stuffed animals. I'm not entirely sure why this room or where it is or why the weird stuffed animals that are watching them. And Toin, he apologises, saying, look, I'm sorry about the misunderstanding. I didn't realise. I thought we'd got past this. I'm just... 
you know what? I'm being a bit childish at the moment. Please just like forgive me. And Yuki's like, look, we should go back and just continue. He's like, no, I've still got seven minutes, seven minutes before like we have to continue playing. And then Yuki has a random flash of some shots of them naked in bed having sexy times. And he's like, like, look, you're, you're the reason I'm not concentrating at the moment. Toen's all like apologetic going, I didn't mean that. It was a misunderstanding. And Yuki's all like, fine, I'm just going to wander off. And Toen grabs him and starts kissing him. And then Yuki starts having weird dream sequences in which he's staring at a giant like telephone pole. And he's like, oh, no, he's a telephone pole. And then the telephone pole falls on him and crushes him. And he's lying on the floor being crushed by the pole going, no, no, why are you crushing me? I said, stop, like, no. And the telephone pole in Terran's voice is like, no, you're mine. I'm going to keep you forever. And he's like, no, don't. And then his friend turns up in the dream going, it's fate. You've just got to accept it. And then... Yuki kind of gives in to the kiss a bit because they always do when, you know, Semes force themselves onto Uki. So they're like, oh, I hate this. I don't like what's going on, but I'm kind of like, oh, no, I can't resist. Why can't I resist? Oh, well, never mind. I better just, like, enjoy this, like, kiss. And then we get a flashback again to Kawashima and Yuki on a date and Yuki's just like zoned out not really in it and Kawashima is just like ordering multiple glasses of wine and she's like oh I'm just snorting here I think she's meant to be snoring but the subtitle says I'm just snorting here um and Yuki's just like oh I'm sorry I like you know what but I think like things are going down and like do you love Toin and she's like I'm not gonna tell you and then we get a brief flash of her in a park with Toen, and you can't hear what they're saying, but he bows apologetically and she turns around and looks all off distance. So it's clearly like Toen's rejected her and she's now in a bad mood. Even though, and then she's like, oh no, but don't worry, I'm still your girlfriend. And I'm like, girl, why are you doing confessing love to other dudes and then still going on dates and then being upset that your date is distant when you were the one that attempted to cheat? But you know what? And then she's all like, oh, let's go out binge drinking. And Yuki's like, oh, God. And then Yuki himself decides he's just going to drink away his, like, problems. But alas, it's causing an effect on his performance and he's not doing as well. And Toen has started noticing that, like, Yuki's just, like, performance is getting worse and worse. And he's just, like, not, not, just not being as good as he is. He's not the violinist that Toen, like, like, first heard and thought, that's amazing. And Yuki's all like, well, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I quit. And he storms off. And Toen is like, no, don't quit. Don't quit. Like, and starts chasing him and down going, you can't quit the orchestra. You can't quit the orchestra. And he's like, I can quit if I want. And then he takes his guitar. And then he, Toen starts dragging Yuki off. And Yuki's like, what are you doing? He's like, well, if I let go of you, you'll run away. And he ends up dragging Yuki all the way to his house. And Yuki's like, what's going on? And then Toen just kind of sits on the floor and very casually is like, Fujima Orchestra needs you. You can't quit. You're essential to it. You are the concert master. You bring the group all together. Please don't quit. And Yuki's like, oh, no, I've got bored of guitar. I've done it for guitar. I've got bored of violin. I've done it for five years. I just don't want to. And Toen's like, no, that's not right. You, you're clearly lying to me. Tell me the truth now. And he's like, well, it's got nothing to do with you. And Yuki's are like, it's nothing to do with you at all. Just like, get out of my face. And Toen then loses it himself. And he's like, what did you say? What did you say? Don't you dare say that it's got nothing to do with me. And he basically grabs Yuki by the face and it seems, it seems tender. He's like, it's got everything to do with you. The first moment I heard you playing violin, I knew, I knew you were the one. I knew I would find you. I knew I'd make you mine. I'm now going to randomly kiss you. And Yuki's like, uh, what? Like, why are you kissing me? And he kind of tries to push him off and then he's looking at the door and clearly not into this kiss. And Toen's like, oh my God, this kiss is so good. Let's like make it more. And I'm like... I don't know if you've kissed many guys, Toen, but this guy definitely isn't interested. And then, then the kiss stops and he's like, we've got lots in common. I'm going to put some Wagner on. And it's like, cool. And then he looks at the bed. And at this point, Yuki's like, uh, nope, I am getting out of here because things are getting weird. And I'm going to try and run from the door. And Toen's in like, oh, you silly fool. Why are you trying to run away from me? <laughs> oh, look, I've just ripped your clothes off. Oh, I've picked you up and thrown you on the bed. And I was a bit like, Okay, well, this is where the sexy times are going to come. But at the moment, like, 
It's not looking particularly consensual. Um, and then Yuki just starts screaming, no, 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 don't, no, don't, no, please don't. Stop, 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 stop. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, totally not consensual. This is this is a definitely non-consensual sex scene. And yes, non-consensual sex is bad. But we've got to remember that this is Yaoi and it's a fantasy. And it's a fantasy written for women. And Yaoi is created to be a safe space to cater for women's desire so we can play out our fantasies on canvases that aren't our own so we don't get, like, triggered or damaged or worried. And it's part of the, like, the thing that, like, a lot of people don't admit to having fantasies, like rape fantasies, or that fantasies that just a handsome, wonderful man will just be, like, so obsessed with you that they can't control themselves around you and take you. It is all in the realm of of fantasy and as far as fantasy sex scenes go it's pretty good it's you know Tailwind pretty much worships like Yuki's body he's all like oh this is lovely here this is lovely there and he's just he just kind of goes for it going oh yeah I'm just gonna go for it and starts having sex and Yuki's a bit like ow that hurts and I'm like wow dude a little bit of prep even if you think like this guy's into it would have been nice and they continue like and having sex and then Yuki's like what are you doing that hurts? And he's like, oh, your body's like a virgin. And he's like, well, of course it's like a virgin. I've never had sex with a man before. And he's like, what, really? But he's like, yes, I'm not gay. And he's like, oh, I don't know, because your penis says otherwise. And it's just like, and then we get all the shots of like his penis being like beautifully like stroked and played with and wanked off obviously you can't see the penis it's the magical invisible penis so you just see the hand kind of doing things that look like it's holding something penis shaped and could potentially be like you know doing some penis shaped motions on it and it's like i love the face of the invisible penis i'm just like you know what he could be wanking off a banana for all we know i mean it's just like it's just redonkulous at least like in other animes there's the black spot of doom the glow the weird like invisalign so you kind of get a slight outline of potential penis here it's just there's nothing he's just wanking off black space like total 100 percent black space so they finish having sex and Yuki just passes out. And Kirishima's like, oh dear, he just passed out. Well, he goes to the shops to buy some food for him. And he sits around and waits for, like, you know, the love of his life to, like, wake up. And Yuki wakes up and he's just like, oh, I'm so in love with you. I've been so in love with you. Um, and ever since after what she said, I just, I just didn't realise, like that you were a virgin, this was your first time with a man. If I'd known that, I would have prepped better. I would have treated you a little bit more gently and I would have taken some more time. I'm so sorry. But after what she said, I just didn't, you know, didn't realise and that's on me. And Yuki's all like, oh, yeah, no, you stupid rapey jerk. Wait a minute. What do you mean what she said? And then we get our little flashback within the flashback. So Karashima, when she was confessing to Toin, Toin was like, I don't love you. Unfortunately, I'm in love with Yuki. I'm gay. And she was like, oh, Yuki. Well, yeah, I have no feelings for him whatsoever. I couldn't care less about him. Yeah, well, I suppose we're meant to be dating. But, you know, he hasn't touched me in three years. And he's gay. And he's probably more into you. And I just don't care. Like, you know, have your fun. Like, you know, he's an annoying man. And, he's, and he just winds me up. And I don't care. And I'm like, oh bitch like and she's like you know what just like with some tenacity you can just make him yours it's fine and that's what went down that scene so the misunderstanding there comes with the fact that Torin really thought that you know Yuki was gay and wasn't interested in his girlfriend whatsoever and like if he was a bit more like possessive and forward then Yuki would totally fall for him so he was just like, and then, so now he's all like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean it, like, please forgive me, I really do honestly love you. Yuki has another one of his freak out moments and starts screaming and runs into the bathroom and, and starts running around the place, not the bathroom. And he's just like, oh, I loved her, I really did love her. And Toen's like, oh, I didn't know. And he's like, and Yuki's like, oh, but I did love her. And decides to run out of the building naked. It's like, well done, dude. But then he falls down the stairs and it's like, oh, no, Yuki, Yuki. And he's like, and we flash back and Yuki's back in his bed, all bandaged up. And he's going a little bit 
Barney. He's like, I did really love her. I was going to marry her. <laughs> and starts giggling insane at the ceiling. And Toen's like, oh my God, that quack doctor that saw you said it was just a mild concussion. No, you've you've lost it. Come back to me. I'm so sorry. I promise I do love you. We can get married. And, and no, Yuki's just going a bit barmy. And then passes out again. Then comes back to again. And is all like, oh, I hate all this. And, and and so like, I'm, I'm like sorry I didn't realise I did mean it when I said I'd marry you and it's like oh dear the misunderstanding but Toen just tells him a million million times how much he is truly in love with him and then he starts feeling really guilty about what he did which he should he was a bit of a rapey bastard even if he did think the guy was into it and that's what he wanted and then he just again he, he begs again he sits down and he goes look Yuki please come back to the orchestra the orchestra needs you now all the time this is happening the orchestra it's flashing back to the future to the orchestra and they're playing the piece of music and it's continuing and the piece of music is getting better and more exciting and more like orchestra -y. I don't know much about orchestras I do like a lot of composed music but it's like I don't know any of the technical terms but it's just getting like builder and ramping up in the instruments and you can see like you keep is getting more and more into it and like even though he's got like a stink eye on he's playing more passionately and therefore Toen is conducting more beautifully and more passionately and it's just getting better and better and they've never played so good and it's like the, the big music is kind of like at the same time adding all like the depth and the emotion to the scene between these two men until finally like it has its moment of silence and goes back to concentrating on Yuki and Toen in this moment and they're confessing the like, you know, no, no, like the orchestra needs you. No, the orchestra needs you. No, you. And it's like, oh, silly boys. And Toen's like, look, if you want to stay in the orchestra, this orchestra needs you. It needs you to bring it your strength, your beauty, your elegance, your humanity. I will quit. If it's better for Fujima, I will quit. And Yuki's like, I hate to admit it, but the orchestra needs you. It needs your passion, your skill, your expos, like conducting to bring us to the next level. And Toen's are like, I really want to bring this orchestra to the next level. I want to do more. I think we could be amazing. And the two of them have this back and forward. And then it goes back to like the future and the, the orchestra playing. And it's and now it's just like that background. It's just the two of them kind of swirling around each other and magical wavy arms and it's a bit surreal. And they're just like going, oh, there's so much passion, dedication. And they're looking at each other and it's all like, no, they're better. The orchestra is better with both of them, with both of them channeling all this passion and ambition. They're going to raise this orchestra up to be one of the best in Japan. And Yuki even starts submitting. He's going, fine, I'm going to take all of Toen's passion and love and conviction and strength that I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it to make Fujima Orchestra the best ever. Yeah, they kind of like do that for a bit, a bit of spinning and calling like Yuki saying he's a tyrant and that he needs his like, he needs Yuki to be the one that humanizes him and closes the gap between his his like strict nature and the feelings of the orchestra. And it's all like, oh yeah, you know what? They've come to some kind of magical agreement. And then we flash back to the future and the orchestra is like woohoo they, they finished their beautiful piece and it's amazing and they're all like oh that was pretty good and Toen applauds them telling them bravo they were amazing and it's like yeah the, this orchestra's got to go places even with the weird like tete -tete that's going on between our two guys and then we see a little bit of a mini flashback I don't know at some point but it's like Yuki and Toen are back in the weird basement with the plush toys, kissing a bit longer. It's like, just one kiss. That's all I ask from you, just one kiss. And then Yuki allows the kiss. And after a while, he's like, no, I'm bored of this. I'm going to slap you and wander off. And Toen is like, oh, yeah, that's the man I love. And then he looks behind him as if someone's hiding there. And I'm like, who's been watching all this time? And he's like isn't my love just so like adorable i'm so in love with him he's the best and it turns out he's just talking to some stuffed toys and then he looks up into the sky like he did at the beginning when he was going what that's that beautiful violin music and he's like oh yes that is my love um 
and then it ends and you're just like you people are so weird but yeah it's like it's entertaining it's fun it's got some sexy times it's got like oh that antagonistic relationship where they hate each other and i can't wait for them to actually be in love of each other you know everyone loves like you know enemies to friends friends to lovers and this one is just like okay so it jumps gun a bit with Terwin going oh I thought you were gay and not a virgin and wanted it to what the hell you literally just like dragged me into bed and then had sex with me and then said you were going to marry me when I was madly in love with this other person and didn't know what was going on but meh, plot I would love to see more. I'd love to, I mean, it's based on novels and then a manga. I'd love to see what happens next, whether or not they do, like, actually just end up in a relationship. Because you know what? All that, like, stink eye and ice mixing that was going on during the final orchestra piece was, like, yeah, no. There's, there's going to be some hate sex at some point. I'm pretty sure, like, Yuki's going to have some revenge. He's going to, like, toughen up and be all like, hey, if you want this, then this is what you're going to do for me. Which I quite enjoy the idea of. But yeah, no, Fujima Orchestra, it's a, it's a good, fun yaoi that I enjoyed and has lots of elements I like, and I definitely think it's worth checking out. So for now, this is me saying bye bye